Wait, we're five minutes, so we think this is accurate to kick this likely. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, this one should be interesting. Uh, so the Israeli team is literally just their like professional under 20 team. So everyone's in shape except the legend. And then the Virginia team plays together all the time, like as a team. So it should be a little bit better soccer. So Group C, what's the score in the Nacoxa SLC game? Jim, one thing, just to remind me, um, like, just have me reset every once in a while on, like, jersey colors. Yeah, I did, second half, I didn't do it again for a while, and then I'm like, no one knows who 
you know. But yeah. Phil says hi. The soccer tournament for the first time ever. 7v7, four days for a chance at a million dollars and immortality in Cary, North Carolina here. Field five, group C action. Hopoel Tel Aviv coming over from Israel facing off against Virginia Dream, the local side. I'm David Goss here on TST's YouTube page with you. This is what TST is, a 7v7 tournament between some of the best players on the planet. 20 minute halves as we head towards what is a target score time. At the end of 20 minutes, we set a target score, and whoever hits that number wins on a walk-off goal every single game, every single time. Many other rule tweaks as well, the big one being no offsides, no throw-ins, and running substitutions throughout the game. We are here in Group C, Hapoel Tel Aviv versus Virginia Dream in Group C, along with SLC and Nicoxia. Nicoxia currently trailing SLC 2-0. As we take a look at some of our star players, and we're going to start with this young man, jean Christophe Kofi, a UVA legend, DC United Academy player, broke through professionally with New York Red Bulls too, and he is using the Virginia Dream as an opportunity to reset his career and put himself back on the stage he wants to be. He, along with many of these other Virginia Dream players, their coaching staff stating, we want to give these players a platform once again to prove they can play in a world with a Hapoel Tel Aviv, with a Borussia Dortmund, with a Wolves from England to show that they can play at the pro level. And on the flip side, for Hapoel Tel Aviv, I said, this is a young side. This is Hapoel's mainly their U20 players, some of the young players breaking into the first team, except this young man, Douglas Silva, young man in cheek, 39 years old out of Florianopolis, Brazil. He is a Hapoel legend. 75 appearances, 12 goals, including the, over, the winning goal against Benfica in UEFA Champions League all the way back in 2011, as well as a goal against Leon in that tournament as well. He went on to play for Red Bull Salzburg for a number of years, win a championship in Austria as well as back in his native Brazil. He has come out of retirement to lead this team for this one. He is over double the age of multiple players in this Hapoel team, but he is hoping to be a leadership on a rock at the back. There are some great stories in this Hapoel team. They've got a player in this group, Tal Archel, 19 years old. He has a picture of him as a child with that man, Douglas Silva. They retook that photo four days ago in Tampa Bay where Hapoel came over for an early training camp to get used to the time zone as well as to get used to this setting because this is a team that's here to win. Every team here, they're here to put their name on display, here to have fun, but winning a massive part of what these groups are here to do, both to put their names up in lights, to let the world know where they stand, to reach out to the American audience and to win that million dollars. I've been told by some of the Hapoel supporters that this game is on TV in Israel right now being broadcast. So Hapoel on stage as Liad Remote will get this one started for us. He scored in the Israeli Premier League just under a month ago against B'nai Reina. And he will lead this team from the front here from Cary, North Carolina for our first of two 20-minute halves in this opening match in Group C action. The Virginia Dream in the pink and blue going left to right on your screen. Hapoel Tel Aviv in the red and white stripes going right to left on your monitors. A big day in the history of Hapoel Tel Aviv as they make their debut here at the soccer tournament and they have officially announced the Minsburg group has acquired them. So new ownership, a new day, and what a way to celebrate it it would be to start this tournament off with a victory. Good movement here, early shot is blocked. A long strike attempt there from Ariel Cohen. Very stylishly sporting the red here. Cohen once again now to the end line, and it's the opening goal! 
in the opening minute. What a way to start for Hapoel Tel Aviv and Roy Alkakin. He gets the goal. And it is a dream start. We see there the red hair, hair of Ariel Cohen floating off the left wing, finding space on the right side. And it's the deft Croy finish there from Roy Alkukin. Israeli U19 international. It's a big part of their U19 European qualifying campaign last year. And as Club Nakaksa pulls back a goal in their match, Hapoel Tel Aviv puts their stake in the ground. And for our second straight broadcast, we've got a goal in the opening minute. What a moment there for Royal Kulkin. He made his Israeli Premier League debut on May 13th. His only appearance so far in his career at the first team level. But as I said, almost this entire team has come through the academy together, many of them between the ages of 18, 19, and 20. So good familiarity, except for this man, Douglas Silva, but that won't be a problem with the just pure class and quality in his game. A reminder on some of the rule tweaks, no throw-ins, everything will be a kick in, no offside as well. And we're gonna have a penalty. Electric start here for Hopwell Tel Aviv. And it's gonna be a penalty kick to double the lead. It is gonna be the young man, Tal Arachel. I said he had a picture with Douglas Silva as a child looking up to his hero. He wanted to one day play in the red and white of Hapoel Tel Aviv. And now standing on the spot with an opportunity to double the lead. And he's able to dispatch it into the corner. What a finish here. You are close to the goalkeeper. It is not an easy penalty on any level. And Arhel with the goal from the PK. And a dream start here for Tel Aviv. A reminder, with the target score, you are never out of time in this game. When you enter the target score period, we will add a goal to the leading team's tally. That will be the target score. From that moment on, if you outscore them, you get there first, you're in it. And so no team is out of it at any point in this competition. Every goal matters, as well as for goal difference in the standings, standard group stage. Four teams per group, the top two will go through to the next round. So every second matters in these 40 minute games plus target time. And Virginia Dream will want to settle early on here, if they can. Carlos Caro. Goalkeeper, he's already conceded twice, will try and recover. Logan Panshot, playing out to him. Williamson now up the line. Brandon Williamson, a Duke grad, familiar with the Raleigh area where we're sitting here right now. DC United Academy at alumni as well. He and Kofi are expected to pull the strings in midfield for this UVA team. Excuse me, for this Virginia Dream team, my apologies. So Williamson restarting play. Williamson last playing in 2020 in the pro ranks with Loudoun United. This young man, Logan Pancho. Any to many surprise retiring from the professional game at just 24. St. Louis Scott Gallagher, legend, won two national titles with Stanford in his time. His brother is actually playing in this tournament with a different team. One of a couple of sibling rivalries. We saw one in our previous game between Newtown and Kingdom FC. 2-1 win for Kingdom in the dying moments. And Cohen going to work once again. Ariel Cohen helped pull the strings. And this shot dangerously bounced into the ground there from Liad Ramot. Ramot. That's a goal in Israeli Premier League play already this season at just 19 years old. 
Threatening up top, Silva steps in and wins the tackle back. Now a chance to counter attack. Hopwell going to work. And dangerously flash wide of the far post. A big opportunity there for Hopwell once again. They're in the driver's seat early on here. It was Yuval Cohen, the Haifa native, moving as a child to this Hopwell Academy down the coast. To make things happen right now for Hopwell. They're using the width very well, but the opposite winger is pinching in being an option and the thing about this game is you want to try and use the width you want to try and create space to play but you need numbers around the ball to connect with as well opportunity here looked like it was going to be a shooting chance laid off to that left foot running substitutes you're allowed to come in and out as many times as you want you can sub at any moment you do not need a stoppage in play to make a sub Hopwell though they feel like their youth is going to be an advantage. They're going to try and push teams early. And we see even a number of players in so far throughout this run of play. Just to pull it back here and get in possession for Lucas Mendez. Mendez, one of the player coaches on this team. Uh, Christoph Kofi, Potomac, Maryland native. Part of what is a heavy DMV presence at this tournament. We've got a team called DMV Diplomats. The number of players out of the DC area, and of course this Virginia Dream side. It is a soccer hotbed, both college, high school, youth, and of course through DC United. And so a ton of talent will be on display from the DMV area. Williamson closed down. He shows off his silky footwork and He's so highly touted coming into this tournament. Silva will step in ahead of Mendez. Douglas Silva at 39 years old. Came up through the Atletico Paranaense Academy, one of the elite academies in Brazil. Silva then went on to play for Hapoel Kafar Saba in Israel. That's what got him to Israel originally. Now he found his way to Hapoel Tel Aviv for one of their golden moments in their club's history. The 2010 championship, as well as the 2011 qualification into the UEFA Champions League group stage. Only one of three Israeli clubs to ever reach that point of UEFA Champions League competition. They went on to spend time in the Vasco da Gama and Figueirense clubs, as well as Bragantino in Northern Brazil, now of course acquired by his former club Red Bull Salzburg those three years with Salzburg leading to both an Austrian Bundesliga championship and an Austrian cup in his locker and yet he felt that desire to come out and represent the club he is most closely associated with one more time great move here from Virginia Dream chance to eat break that lead in half and what a block on the goal line and once again Ariel Cohen making a play Lucas Mendez there. He had the right idea. Simple with his finish. He had the square back from Zumana Diara. And Mendez. He had the goalkeeper beat, but could not get it past Cohen and Silva. Warning sign there for Hapoel Tel Aviv. Cohen now. He's got an assist. Goal line clearance now as well. This one's dropped into his feet. Up the middle. Chance for Virginia to transfer. Transition, excuse me. Cohen now wins it back. He's got pink and blue jerseys around him. The line, remember, no offside in this tournament, so you don't have to ride that line. You can really find your space. But what we saw in the previous match was Newtown figuring out how to stretch the shape of their opponent. Let's get a look there at Yuval Cohen. Oh, 
Cohen, just 18 years old out of Haifa. Like I said, a really young Hopwell crew. That should fare well for them. They have two matches here today. Every team playing two matches on the opening day. They face off against the Coxia at 6.45 p.m. tonight. And then they finish group stage play tomorrow against SLC FC. Squad of players mainly out of the Toronto area representing League One Ontario in this one. SLC FC leading the Coxia 2-0 out of halftime. Most recent score update from there was now 2-2 as Nicoxia has equalized in the second half. Cohen once again, he has it knocked away. Into the hands of Caro. And the target score has been set in the Far East United West Ham game. With culture by Mo FC leading Dallas United 2-0 for Far East United. One of the most fascinating teams in this tournament. The bulk of the players coming out of Southeast Asia, many playing for Guam, Philippines, Thailand, Malaysian, Indonesian national teams. The man who created Far East United running an Asian 7v7 Champions League. So a lot of players with a ton of familiarity of this format, of this spacing, of the way this game plays. The collision there between Williamson and Mendez, teammate on teammate. And that allows Hopwell to transition here. Good shot from Sagi Genis from distance there. It was three on two though. He maybe could have done better. As Hopwell Tel Aviv in their classic red and white strip. Going right to left on your screens. Univer or Virginia Dream in the blue and pink. Gorgeous pink. Going left to right in this one. This team, they want art, fashion, and soccer all to come together to create the ethos of what they want to build and promote. Does the Virginia dream? We're not founded here for TSD. This is a team that exists week in and week out around the year. They're able to put together a dangerous roster. As I said, many of these players playing together consistently. Up top, so we're hoping for the best here for Lucas Mendez. Mendez is one of the player GM coaches of this team and one of the founders of the club. Played for Richmond Kickers, the New York Cosmos professionally after coming out of UVA. Mendez had the best look of this game so far for Virginia. As this one's floated up wide. So Lucas Mendez. After that collision with his teammate Brandon, Brandon Williamson. On the sideline getting kept off. That's the last thing you want to see. Hoping for the best for Mendez. We're hoping it's just that we're knocked out of him. He has been a big part of this group. Virginia has settled a little. They've got work to do. Hopowell leading 2 0 through their first and third minute goals. Because of the target score, time will never run out on Virginia Dream. They've got a lot still here to fight for. Hopwell looking to get back into the scoring ranks. And it's finally cleared away by Panshot. The substitute here has to come off between the hash marks at the center of the field, as you see there. Our fourth official making sure it's done correctly. Taylor Parks getting on the field here at that center forward position. Williamson and Kofi have played the entire game so far in that midfield. Chance for Hopowell and a big save from Caro. Hopowell knocking it around, taking slowly an inch at a time before finding a dangerous area to shoot from. Quickly taken now. Leo Benavisti, restarting the attack, laid off and just a little bit too far. Another good look here for Hopowell. This Hopowell team. Many of these players, as I said, coming through the academy 
one of the most successful academies in Israel. Currently, Omer Senor, who was supposed to be on this team and is on the official roster, is at the U-20 World Cup, scored against Japan in the final group stage game to get Israel out of the group. They were able to knock off Uzbekistan in the round of 16 as this one's pulled back and cleared. So Hopwell Tel Aviv with six players on the U-20 roster that are currently waiting for Saturday to face off in the quarterfinals. Excuse me. The, yeah, the quarterfinals of the U-20 World Cup against Brazil. That's how successful this U-20 group has been for Hopwell. That's how... Highly regarded this Hopwell Academy is in Israeli soccer ranks. Williamson back on the ball now for Virginia. Another threatening moment for Virginia Dream. You can feel the goals in this team. 20 minute halves here, so five minutes roughly and stoppage time to go here in this first half and carry North Carolina. 40 minute games that will be ended on a golden goal guaranteed in target score time, no matter what. Which means these teams always have a chance. And you can see what target score can do. Far East United went in up 3 1. The target score then is placed at one goal ahead of the higher team's score, so it was put at four. West Ham now has cut it to a 3 2 lead. If West Ham scores the next two goals, they win. Target score always giving you a chance. On the flip side, here in Group C action, Club Nicoxia taking a 3-2 lead in the final minutes of regular time. So as it stands, they will be one goal ahead in the target score time for SLCFC. That's heartbreaking. Leading 2-0 at halftime, but these games, especially these first games, have been so far learning experiences for teams. We've seen a number of comebacks as teams sort of get comfortable with the format. Some teams, groups of players have less familiarity so they grow throughout the game. Some teams are built on their depth or their youth and they grow into the game as well. But that is a massive result in Group C here. This one slipped through. Good interception there by Nick Dusek Dukeski. Dukeski monitor things at that center back position. Ball snuck through here, another chance, and what a save from Carlos Caro. But physicality on the collision, and it looks like we might be headed to the spot once again. They were in target score time on field three with the target score of four. Meaning the first to the target score of four wins. And don't forget a player so will be from each picks team up his first yellow card. He's already been and beaten from the spot once. Three. Last time it was Archel to take it. It'll be Tal Archel once again. Already sitting on a goal. One of the leaders of this young group. He joined the Hopwell Academy at six years old. And he makes the lead three here in this first half. And you see what it means to him. Archel, two goals from the spot. Hapoel leading 3-0 here through the first half. It is a dream start on a historic day for Hapoel Tel Aviv. The new ownership group, the Mintzberg group, a group of Americans who want to plant Hopwell's flag in the U.S., become a fan favorite around the world. And what a great start here at the TST. A chance to win this first ever competition and write your name in the history books. Not too shabby as well. A chance at a million dollars. And Hopwell make it four as this one floats through. But as I just said, SLC in our other Group C match leading 2-0 at halftime. They are now losing 3-2 heading in to target score time against Nakaxa. No lead is safe here in seven on seven play. 
and we will find out how this one goes down in a few moments. Hopwell, electric, three-goal lead here at halftime of this Group C matchup. Open, by the way, I was stretching a little because I thought we were going to throw the groups up. That's why I was like doing the whole group. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. spot they painted is it 12 yards away the line for the top of the box so they're taking the pk's from the spot Yeah, I like ending on stats because it takes us like into. Here's this game. This whole, this stats page, by the way, some of the names are like totally right. They have a guy who's not here subbing in for a goalkeeper who never came off the field. But the goals are all. I think the goals are right. Uh, I don't believe the goals are right. Fans, if you're just yeah, joining us, welcome a quick reminder of the TSP yeah, okay. rule, which so are as follows. Either that or I'm there is no off. slide tackling, no offsides. We play two seven and a half followed by target score time. At the end of the second half, we set a target score by adding one. The numbers on this statue are different. Just a reminder, let me know when the coxswain goes. Uh, the other Group C game, the coxswain. Just let me know when it goes up this one. Uh, you said Far East 1 on their target score? All of the quote unquote good teams have pretty much lost. Because all the other teams are like arena soccer teams or like 7 7 teams. And it's good. Nice. This logo is sweet.
TST, the soccer tournament, the first time ever, a 7v7 tournament. A chance to win a million dollars, and here is what we are headed towards. At the end of this 20-minute half, we will enter target score time. If it were to end the way it is now, the target score would be four goal, or would be a fourth goal. So Hopwell would need one more. Virginia Dream would need four. That goal will be a walk-off goal for us, no matter how it comes, which means time can never run out on this Virginia Dream team. And as close as they get, just makes the target score even closer for them if they're able to equalize or take the lead. It would put them in the driver's seat here. Hapoel Tel Aviv in their red and white kits going left to right on your screens. The Virginia Dream in their dark black kits with the pink going right to left as Jean Christophe Kofi closing down there. And Williamson coming over to win it back for Virginia. It'll be out for a throw in. Apoel, Tel Aviv, three first half goals. The opener coming in the first minute from Al Kukin off the assist from Cohen. Archel, two penalty kicks in the third and the 20th minute. And almost an opener here once again. Apoel, starting the way they finished. They've been incredible offensively. Douglas Silva, the captain of this team at 39 years old. Led them in the first half at the back, not starting in this second half. It does look like Hopwell has made a goalkeeper change, so Ido Sharon is off. And on the ball here is Matthew Frank, the lone American in this side. Mamaronek, New York native, Red Bull Academy native, Stanford University national champion. Coming to this tournament as a member of Hapoel Tel Aviv for now and maybe for longer after this. So Matthew Frank will get the second half in goal. Hapoel stepping their pressure high and Kofi's able to win it back. But you see Hapoel baiting the pressure, forcing the ball where they want it and then attacking up the middle there. It was Leo. Benabesti with the attack and now Hapoel that shot is deflected and safely finally into the hands of Caro Hapoel Tel Aviv getting everything they want here in this opening moments of this second half similar to what we saw in the first half Hapoel you want to build this lead as much as possible it gives you a ton of breathing space in target score time to make mistakes we saw in our previous match. Newtown, they got a penalty kick and a red card against Kingdom FC to close out. Second half stoppage time, they weren't able to take advantage. They lost on a deflected free kick. Two to one in a game they dominated. You don't want to leave anything to chance here, especially how condensed these groups will be three games in a day and a half to decide who moves to the next round. That to was to go back to the feet of Kofi, he's wide open. Kofi, his shot, and he can't keep it down. It's deflected, though, by Amir A. Ella. The Jerusalem native puts it out for a corner kick. It'll be Logan Panshot to take. Panshot facing off against his Stanford former teammate in Matt Frank in goal. It's it low. And a bestie. Lucky maybe to see that one go over the top. Panshot goes short this time. Williamson back to Panshot. Now reminder, there are no throw-ins. Everything is a kick-in as this one's played in. So any ball played out can be floated in like a cross. Panshot sees that one. Block, so not a corner kick. Doesn't have a ton more value than a ball played out near the corner, except a corner kick can go directly in. A throwing kick is an indirect free kick taken. So a good heap of pressure there. Checking on field five, your Continuous power, corner Hopper kicks for Virginia three. Dream, not able Virginia Dream nil. to take advantage. Amit Lemkin coming back to pick that ball up. 
for Hopwell, a team filled of players almost exclusively between the age bracket of 18 and 21 years old, players who have come through the academy together, who play both at the first team and U20 ranks for Hopwell week in and week out. So a lot of young legs, a lot of energy, as well as cohesiveness for this Hopwell team shown well for them so far. Kofi under control now for Virginia. Out wide here for Raheem Taylor Parks. Williamson gets it back. Williamson's long ball down the right wing. Brought down, flicked into the box, and the header on. It was a dangerous moment there. Liam Emson floating on that far post. Emson, the GW University alum, for A10 Rookie of the Year. As we get an update here from Group C action, Nakaksa tied with SLC 3-3. So SLC trailing 3-2, heading into second half stoppage time. They equalize. That means next goal wins across the board in target score time there. No ties in this tournament. If after five minutes there's not a goal scorer in target time, you pull a player off for both teams, you move to six on six, and so on every five minutes after that. So an opportunity for either Nacoxia or SLC to set the tone on top of Group C as Kofi here just rides the tackle. So calm after Lemkin puts him under pressure and these young players, they're going to be spry, they're going to be active, they're going to be energetic, but strength, maybe a little bit of that muscle mass and experience of how to ride a tackle could be somewhere that they struggle compared to some of these other teams when you look at teams full of World Cup veterans, World Cup winners, Premier League winners, MLS Cup winners, as this one's pulled back, a chance here, Emson shot is saved, Archel can't get away from pan shot, and now Hopwell wins it. The break is on, Lemkin cuts in. Lemkin slides it through, no offside. And finally, Arhel has his hat trick. The captain, tall Arhel, makes it 4-0. He has been a part of Hopewell for 13 years. Of the 19 years he's been on the face of this earth. And Artsel with the goal there has the hat trick secure. But with that target score, nothing means the game is over. And Apoel will have to keep their aggression as Archel heads out. What a performance here. Well, Hapoel Tel Aviv, the Lita, 6-3 winners in their match over Wolverhampton. That right now is our biggest score differential, along with Hoosier Army's 5-2 win over Borussia Dortmund. This long strike played in, Caro chasing, and now clears it away. So Hapoel Tel Aviv, a chance to sort of put their name out early on here in this tournament and say we are a squad to be reckoned with. Some fear in their opponents, the Coxia. Losers in target time here in Group C. SLC steals the win to move to first place in Group C. They will face off against this Virginia Dream Team tonight at 7.15 p.m. What a match, SLC up to zero. They went down 3-2, they equalized 3-3 before target time, and they won in target time for a 4-3 victory. So the winner of this match will move into a tie. The tiebreaker first off is goal differential right now. So Hopwell Tel Aviv looking to pour it on to ensure their spot at the top of the group. Ramot has that one saved by Caro. Goalkeeper wants touches, but Carlos Caro right now has been way too active for his liking. Corner kick played short. On the end line, and the cutback once again for Ramot. 
not able to keep it on frame. Kara played wide. Carlos Caro beaten in the first minute. There was a Cruyff finish from Al Kulkeen set up by Tal Cohen, Ariel Cohen. Ariel Cohen was phenomenal in that first half. Had a goal line clearance as well. Remember to keep it at a 2-0 lead at the time. If Virginia had cut the lead to 2-1, it could have changed the momentum quite a lot. Angel Chavez turns it over, can't chase it back. Well, now a chance in the box again. Battling away the back heel, it's laid off. And the shot over the crossbar in the end from Ella. Hapoel right now. They've been cleaning their lines defensively, but their energy in the attack has been the difference. They've always got another option for whoever's on the ball. And that's so key, I think, in this setup, 7v7. The more players get isolated, the more they have to go long, the harder it is to keep possession. I think you always want movement. You always want players coming to the ball to be an option. See Virginia here. You've got to play out of pressure. You've got to play 1v1 as your team tries to stretch the field. See Hapoel Tel Aviv just a fluidity and instinct and an energy level right now as Cohen back in off the bench. Plays it off for Lemkin. Cohen will go all the way back to the feet of Frank. And Frank. Stanford alumni in between the pipes. Beautifully done here as now the legend Silva dribbles it forward. Cohen lays it off. And it's taken away. And you can see Cohen and Silva as well as Roy Alkulkin who had the opening goal sort of being used as a hockey line here all coming back on the field together a chance here for Virginia and this will be a penalty the other way two PK scored but Demetrius Shepard Lewis the Laurel Maryland native draws the penalty kick and an opportunity for Virginia to cut into this lead. Reminder with the target score finish. It'll be one goal more than the leading team. Every goal Virginia can pull back gets them closer to what will be the target score, even if they're trailing. It'll be Logan Panshot to step up. The 32nd pick in the 2021 MLS Super Draft pan shot to take and he sends his former college roommate frank the wrong way he scores the opening goal of the tsd tournament for this virginia dream squad you can see a little smile on the face there i think from frank who's probably been in how many stanford training sessions Staring down penalty kick attempts from Panshot. Panshot played for the U.S. youth national teams across the spectrum all the way up to the U-19 level. Facing off there against Frank, who's played with the U.S. U-17s in his time. And a lifeline here for Virginia. They said it, they had a huge chance in the first half. Cleared off the line as this one's hit off the volley. And Frank safely puts it over his crossbar. You don't want to take any risks if you can avoid it. So Frank clears it away. Williamson here. Virginia had a string of three or four corner kicks they couldn't take advantage of in this early in the second half. Silva heads it away. 39-year-old Brazilian center back is going to deal with most balls in the air pretty simply. Going to play through Gabriel Soriano Beltran's feet a whole lot. I think you'll see Soriano Beltran be one of the players in this group that helps elevate as this tournament goes along. He plays week in and week out with the Fredericksburg Fire who are an arena soccer league team. 
in front of a number of players in this team. Five that play with the fire. So you have to think at some point this coaching staff will maybe lean on both the cohesion as well as the natural comfort in a small sided game. Not a lot of space as wow. Hopwell play through pressure again. Numbers closing for Virginia. That cross is blocked. Ramote continuing to battle. And he gets called, I believe, for the slide there. Slide tackling not allowed in this game. Sliding legal if you're going to attack a, a loose ball in open space, but you cannot slide in the vicinity of an opposing player. On field four. Play on. An opportunity coming here, maybe. Williamson trying to create some space. Lays it off to Panshot. How much more involved is Logan Panshot, though, in this second half? He, he was playing on the right side of a back three in the first half, very deep. He has been central most of this second half. As Virginia tries to play through his feet. Beautifully done. Williamson back to Panshot. And that is Virginia Dream starting to understand the spacing. Williamson clears out of the middle. There's no offside, so he can go all the way to that end line. But those dropbacks, first time off crosses and long balls are gonna be a huge danger. We've seen it already in this opening day session. Balls floated or driven to the back post, knocked down immediately across the face of goal for a runner coming on. Virginia Dream one. Once again, Lewis drew the penalty to open this game up. Silva bashes that one off him. He thought it was Hopwell possession. That will not be the case as we play on. Feels like this Virginia team, as we've seen a number of these teams opening things up, really starting to settle in as this game goes along. An opportunity here. Frank with a point blank save and the volley shot wide. Mejia charging in. Samuel Mejia, that's the chance he's been waiting for. And Virginia continuing to create. Can Hopwell, though, take advantage of the aggressiveness the other way? And they beat Cora once again in the 38th minute. Finally, it feels like Amir Ella has been banging, or excuse me, Liad Ramot has been banging on the door. He finally has his breakthrough. 5-1. As we approach the end of this one, as it stands now, the target score would be at six. No matter what, at this point, Hapoel Tel Aviv will go into the target score time with the lead. The question is by how much can Virginia Dream maybe put chip away here and make life a little more possible in target score time? And a foul right here on the edge of the area is a big chance. It is captured by Mo Ali FC2. Dallas United 0. We're in target score time with a target score. That goal there for Zumana Diara on the flick on header. Frank made the big save. He's had to make three or four here in this second half. Can he hold the fort once again and keep the lead at four? Diara, Williamson, and Kofi hanging around. Mejia as well. As Shepard Lewis in the box. Williamson drives it through the wall. What a save by Frank. If this Hopwell team wins, Matthew Frank has earned his portion of the million dollar prize already in this first game. Splitting time with Ido Sharon. Ido Sharon in goal. Line. 
Close down immediately. There is no time to think for the Virginia Dream. Sagi Janice wins it back. Like in the first half, Ariel Cohen, a menace. He is one of the players to watch. Originally played for Hopwell, Ramat's gone in Northern Tel Aviv before moving to the Giants, Hapoel Tel Aviv. He already has a goal in Israeli Cup competition for the first team. He's played almost 300 minutes at the Israeli Premier League level, and you can see why the red-headed demon has done so. So we have finished regular time here, but we are headed to target score time. This game's not over. The first team to score six goals, their sixth goal, will win this game. Hopwell Tel Aviv sitting on five for Virginia Dream. It's gonna be an uphill battle, but they have the chance in front of them. You see the rules here. So adding that one goal to Hopwell's five right now puts us at six. Every five minutes of play, if we don't have a goal, we will pull a player off the field, one from both teams. So we would move to six v six, five v five, and so on all the way down to 1v1 in our previous game here on our broadcast between Newtown and Kingdom. We got down to 5v4 in that game because of a red card. But we have seen some drama. We saw Bladen Grass come back from 2-0 down to win it in target time. We saw West Ham cut Far East's lead in half in target time before a dramatic winner by Far East to win. 4-2 in their game, and we saw SLC FC, the other team in this group C, come from down 3-2 in the 40th minute to tie it at 3-3 and win it in target time. So they sit in first place right now in group C with the win. If Hopoel wins this game by anything more than one goal, they move to first place on goal differential as the U.S. women have kicked off Heather O'Reilly's team under the leadership of Michelle Akers and Mia Hamm facing off against Say Word. This culture by Mo Ali is leading Dallas United in target score time. They need one goal, Dallas needs two. I have said it a number of times here. You can never say this in the sport of soccer. The clock cannot run out on Virginia. So if they score the next five goals in a row, they can win this game, and there is no way to stop that. But if Hopwell scores one, this game's over. Williamson getting us restarted. Archel, right now a hat trick for Hopwell. Ramot with the goal, Al Kulkin with the goal as well. Is there a winner in this one? For Hopwell Tel Aviv, they've given themselves a ton of breathing space. They scored in the first minute and the third minute. If they can score quickly here, this game would be over. Silva, the 39-year-old, out of retirement. He scored against Benfica in the UEFA Champions League. Can he score one here at the TST? Mo Ali scoring in target score time. So they secured their win against okay, Dallas United. Mo Every Mo team Mo here Mo playing two games on this opening day. So this just their first game of this Thursday. As we fly forward here, Ariel Cohen. He has been the man to stir the straw. He's got two assists already. Can he do it once again? Space for the shot, saved by Cora up in the air by Zumara. Cohen helps bring it down. Denise not able to win it back. Corner goes quickly. Again, that's field two. They're going to have to throw some numbers for the eight goals in this one. You, the assumption is, as we get through each set of five minutes, it becomes easier and easier to score with less players on the field. If that's the case, it only gets easier for Hopwell to end this game quicker. So I think if you're Virginia, you have to extend your lines a little bit. Get some numbers higher. Going out wide for Cohen. The game with Cohen. His stamp. Royal Keen had the opener. He rotates it wide. 
Now Ganese. Goes down by Kofi. Laid back here for Cohen, and it's the winner! Ario Cohen, the assist on the opening goal in the first minute. The assist on the final goal of regular time in the 38th. And the winner here in stoppage time. Ariel Cohen for the red and white. He dyed his hair for the club he loves. On a historic day around the world for Hopwell Tel Aviv. They stamped their name down as early favorites at the first ever TST. The biggest margin of victory we have seen. A 5-1 win over Virginia Dream. And you better believe Hopwell Tel Aviv will now sit in first place in Group C ahead of SLC FC. They will face off against SLC tomorrow at 11 a.m. to close out Group Stage action here in Cary, North Carolina. So a chance to try and pad their lead at the top of the group at 6.45 this evening against Nacoxia. What a performance. Two goals in the opening three minutes. A hat trick for Argel. Ariel Cohen, two assists, and the winner in target score time. TSD is off and rolling here from Cary, North Carolina. We've got our next broadcast coming up for you in just a moment as you can follow TSD on Peacock, on YouTube, and on Facebook. It is a buffet of soccer here today. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you again in a moment. Jim, can you hear me? No, you're good. The thing I need to fix is I have to stop saying, like, this first, I keep saying six goals, like you have to score six goals. I have to say first two and then the number. Yeah. That seems to be, otherwise I feel pretty good about the explanations. It's just a little long-winded. Okay. Okay, cool. I will. Um, all right, what I'll go saying? wander out for the next game. Uh, Jim, uh, can you hear me? So, I mean, Jimmy Conrad, World Cup player, and minutes. his name's on the team. It's Conrad and Beasley. So, um, I would assume those are the names we want to go with for this one. Gracie Damn, FC. Bro. So That's I think we want to go. I'm going to go ask, but right now I would tell you that we're going to go with um, number 19. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to – so we're going to go on at 1245. Okay, great. That's perfect. I'm going to go out and wander and – you will find out the one issue with me is you will have to check.